The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Uh, hello, crew. How's everybody doing today? Can everyone hear me all right? Yes. Okay, we got one yes. Got a couple yeses. All right, so today is going to be a basis of Corel for beginners. So, you know, if you're already used to Corel or know how it works, um, this probably isn't the best for you. But... Uh, so we're just going to go over the basics. So starting out, my name's Sean. Thank you for attending. This is my first webinar. Um, on the other end, we have Rudy answering questions. So if you guys, if I don't answer anything, Rudy should be able to get to you. All right. All right. Is everybody in? Everybody can hear me all right? Hi, Rudy. <laughs> All right, so we're going to jump in. All right, so first thing we're going to go with is the file. Um, now, we're going to be working on an X7, so if you're working on an X6 or X5, some of these layouts might be a little bit different, but for the most part, all these are going to work the same. Um, so first off, we're going to start with file. Um, you'll see at the top, you have new, open, and import are going to be our most, our most used tools, and you also have save as. So new is just a new document. Just going to click this. It's going to mostly ask you, you can get rid of this by do not show again, but you're basically going to start with the same page you have now. Um, if you'd like to change anything, you can, and then you're just going to click OK. So you'll see up at the top how you have Untitled 1, Untitled 2. Um, so that's your new page. And you can switch back and forth just by simply clicking on them. So first I'm going to show you the difference between Import and Open. So when you open a file, it's going to mostly start off at your desktop, and it's going to only open CorelDRAW files. Um, you can easily switch this by clicking on any file type and pick a file that you would like. Um, when you open a file, the difference from importing it, it's going to, it's going to ask you this. Um, always import as curves. Um, when you bring it in as a text, if you're using a certain text, it might not convert right when you open it. So curves will always convert right. So we're going to just click OK, and if we zoom out a little, you'll see the files. So when we open it, it's going to, you can see that we have three pages open now. Now if we go back to our entitled page one, where we begin with, instead of opening, we're going to click Import. And the same thing, you're going to see all the file formats at the bottom. Um, if you have a certain file that you know you're working with, you can go ahead and select it, or you can just scroll through your files and open it that way. Um, so I'm going to go up to our desktop. Scroll down. Go ahead and import. It's still going to ask you the same questions. You're just going to click yes for curves. And now right now you can see that it says whatever the file type that I want or that I've clicked to open. And wherever I click on this page, it will open the file. So if you want to stay on the same page when you're working, you're going to want to import. If you don't mind opening a new page, you can go to open. All right. Now sticking in the file tab, um, when you go to save a file, there's two different options you can do. One is save as. When you do this, it's most likely going to only let you save as Corel or the basic file types. Um, if you're working with certain cutters and you need to save as an EPS or SVG, you'll most likely want to go to export. And this way you can select whatever file type you use for your cutter. Mm -hmm. Then just click SVG. Um, you can name it the title. Whatever folder you're in right here is where it's going to save it to. And you'll just click export. And when we export, just like we import, we want to save as curves. Okay. And then that's done. All right, so moving over to the Edit tab. Um, edit's mostly just obviously editing your 
um, file. Uh, if you want to do un undo move, it's right here. You also have copy and paste. Um, those are the most mostly used tools that you'll use in edit. Um, if you look on the screen, you'll also see the undo right here. And you also have the copy is control C and paste is control B. So those shortcuts work as well too. Um, Linda, yes, this will be in the recorded files. So if you guys have any questions while we're going through this, just feel free to ask. Um, if I'm going too fast or anything, just let me know and I can slow it down for you guys. All right. Um, next is the view. Um, with these, it's the two most uh, views we'll use is the wireframe or enhance. Um, right now, when you usually start a file, it's always going to open an enhance view. Uh, if we switch to the wireframe, it shows you just the cut lines. So if you're looking, if you're sending this to your cutter, you'll always want to look in the wireframe just to make sure you don't have any overlapping lines. Sometimes we don't see it, but they could be overlapping. So right here, it'll show in the wireframe, but when we go to enhance, it doesn't really look like they're overlapping as much. So when you before you cut it, you always want to switch the wireframe and just make sure. All right. All right, next in view, down here, if you scroll down, now this might be where it's a little different um, from going to X7 to X6 or X5, um, but all these tools are still in, um, both are all corrals. Um, you'll see your rulers and guidelines. Usually these are going to be turned on, and you'll see these at the top of the screen and are surrounding your workspace. And if you click and hold on these and drag down, you can bring down these guidelines, and you can pull them from either side, you can pull out as many as you need. And these just help you line up your designs while you're working. And then if you scroll back to view, you'll see the snap too. All right. And then right now we have it checked already, but you'll see guidelines. So what we just pulled out were the guidelines. So now this works great with text. So if you have W got one word here and I'm just holding and hold, I'm just dragging holding or clicking dragging and then right clicking and it'll duplicate that for me so that's another shortcut all right so now with these guidelines that we pulled out if we had these and we wanted to make sure everything was lined up perfect we can just drag these down you'll see that blue line come up at the bottom, that's letting you know that it's touching that line. And then you can do that with the same with rock. So now you know that this line's these two words are lined up and it's you know you can send it right over to cut it. Right? And then the guidelines are as simple as just clicking on them and clicking delete to get rid of them. And then you can go from there. So with view that pretty much covers all that. Um, you can obviously turn all these off if you don't like the way it looks. You can turn off the ruler and you'll just be stuck with your workspace. Um, with layout, we tend not to use layout too much. Um, there's just a lot you can do out here with the layout as well. Um, so you'll see at the bottom you have your page set up, the background and the layout. Um, one thing that's easy for people to start out with is changing the background. So you'll once you click back real quick, just go to layout and then page background. It's going to pull up this screen. Right now it's going to probably be selected as no background. So if you go to solid, we can change the color. Um, you can choose any color through here. Um, let's just change it to blue. And that way you'll see this is your page set up right now. So usually when you're working with a cutter, you'll always want to, if you end up sending a file over, you're going to have to have it in this page. So this kind of lets you know where the page is located. Um, and you can see from now, we're, all of our designing is over here. If we want to get back to that page setup, a quick um, tool is right here. And you just go to page, and it brings you right to your page. And then you'll see the page setup and layout. Um, we tend not to go through here too much just because it's an extra step. If you look right at the top right here, you're going to have 8.5 by 11. Now, if I have something selected, it's going to give me 
the dimensions of what I have selected. But if I click off of it and I just have nothing selected, it's going to give me the layout, the dimensions of my page. So if you need a bigger page for saving a project, you can just increase the size by just typing it in. All right. All right, so now we're going to go to Object. And if you're working in X6 or 5, I believe this is going to be a range instead of Object. They changed the name. Um, so through here, um, these are the tools we kind of use a lot when we're designing. There's a lot of shortcut tools. I'm just going to create some boxes real quick. All right. So you can see everything a lot more is highlighted now. The main tools we're going to use are combine, the group, and if you look to the right here, these are all the shortcuts. So once you get familiar with Corel, you'll be able to use the shortcuts, Control L, Control G for group, ungroup is Control U, um, and then a lot of the tools we're going to use is sh the shaping tools. And you'll see that all of these have these little icons to the left of them, and if we look just on a regular desktop, these icons right here are the same tools that's listed under Object. So it's just another way to get to them. All right, and then there's Convert to Curves and Convert Outline to Object. So these three in combined are the four most basic tools you're going to use in the object or the shaping tools. So I'll kind of give you a brief description of how they all work. Uh, when you're designing, welding is going to come in handy a lot. Um, when you have two objects and you need them as one, that's going to be the weld. And when you highlight over all these, you'll see the description and the name of the tool come up over them. So the first one is going to be weld. So it's just going to take both objects that you have selected and make them one. So you can just see that right now it's just one solid object. Now to go back without clicking undo, you can hit control Z and that's just another shortcut tool. So I'm just going to highlight my object. And by when I'm highlighting right now, I have at the top left the pick tool. There's a couple different pick tools. You have the freehand or the free transform. Usually the pick tool works the best. Um, when you're working more with rhinestones, the freehand will come in handy. Um, the freehand allows you to just select or circle a certain object. So if I just want the blue instead of the red, I can just come through here and just select the blue. Whereas the pick tool is just a square. It's not going to let you, you can't make a circle or anything like that. Um, so when you're working with rhinestones or if you just have to select a certain part of the design, that's when the free hand is going to come in handy. So it's just a quick little circle. You just start it wherever you want and then you'll just see that that's selected. All right, so I'm going to go back and by changing this, if you just hold and click or click and hold, it's going to give you the different options. So I'm going to go back to pick. I'm going to select both of these and show you trim. So trim is just going to trim the outside of the whatever's on top from the bottom. So now when I go to move my red square, you can see that's taken out of it. So I'm going to push Control Z to go back and one more time. And then the next is intersect. Um, so this one is just whatever is on top. You can see that the red is on bottom. So whatever part of the blue that is over the red, it's going to intersect those two. So I click intersect. I move away. And now you can see that there's this little box behind it that's intersected now too. So you can use that tool. Um, it comes in handy when you're using fonts on top of an object. Um, there's a couple webinars that Rudy's done that he shows this tool and you know how to create designs with it so you can see it then. Um, let me show you real quick with the TRW rocks too how it can work. So let's pick bolder font. So I'm going to right click my text and you'll see this pop-up screen come up and if I scroll down to the bottom you'll see order into the front of page. This is going to tell my text that I want it in front of everything else. And then from here you can just 
size it down. And next we're going to highlight both objects. I'm going to use the intersect. And now you'll see that TRW is just sitting right in the middle of that. And then you can use your other tools, such as the next one is simplify. When I simplify two objects, it's going to take whatever's on top and subtract it from the bottom. So it's just going to cut that out. So now it's just a box and this is all cut out. So if this were to be laying on a shirt, you would see the shirt through where the white is. All right. So go back a couple steps. So next. So front and front minus back and back minus front. You're really not going to use these tools too often just starting out. I'll show you quickly how to use them. Again, um, I want my the pink box to be on front. Uh, Linda, um, what tool were you were you talking about uh, when I did the intersect with the TRW? Okay. So back real quick. So that's going to be the simplify tool, Linda. So I'm just going to take it. Um, you can resize your design. If I hold shift while, I pull, while I'm resizing the TRW, it's going to pull both sides out. If I just pull it by the corner, it'll just do the one. But if you hold shift while you do it, you can um, just enlarge both sides. All right. So I'm just going to move that to the center. Right now it's behind it. So instead of clicking on my text to move it to the front, I'm going to click my blue box, right click, go to order, and then back a page. All right. And now the TRW sits on front. So I'm going to hold or select both. And then right up here is going to be the simplify. And then that's going to take out whatever I have on top from the, the bottom. Is that what you're looking for, Linda? Awesome. All right. So staying with this, um, again, the next two tools um, you won't use with basic designing, but it does come in handy eventually. So I'll just go over it quickly. Is the front minus back and the back minus front. So what is the difference between intersect and simplify? Okay, so real quick, grab these two boxes. Or I can just stick with the TRW and the blue one. So when I, I'm going to make two copies of this, and what I'm doing is holding this down and right-clicking while I have it click, or while I have it, the mouse held, and that's going to duplicate my box. So I'll show you the difference between simplifying and intersecting. So if we intersect, whatever we have on top is just going to be put into the design. So it's not really taking anything away. Um, you're actually like adding it to the design. Where the simplify is whatever's on top, we're taking it out of the bottom. So the shirt's going to show through this part, whereas it's not going to sh whatever color you add on here is what is going to show through on this one. So when you simplify something out, you're leaving this white area. When you're intersecting, whatever you have on, whatever you're overlapping, that's what you're going to be left with. Does that make sense? Awesome. All right. So let's get rid of some of this. All right. So now I'm going to highlight these two. And now this is the front minus back and the back minus front. Um, so let's do another copy of this. So I'm just holding the mouse. When I click, you can see that I have four arrows. And when I right click, it's going to add that little plus sign. So that note, that's telling Corel that you want to duplicate it. So you're just going to do a quick duplicate. So I'm going to put TRW to the back on this one and on the front on this one. And it's most likely going to have the same effect. Um, so the first one is going to be front minus back. And if you highlight over it, it's going to remove the back object from the front object. So it's almost like a simplify but it gets rid of your design too. So you're not, you can't, you're not going to be able to 
have TRW left over or anything, it's just going to simply get rid of it. And on this one, we're going to do the back minus front, and it's just going to take whatever you have on the front layer and remove it from the back. So it's close to what the simplify does, but it actually just gets rid of your vector too, whatever's laying on front, so you're not going to be able to have that anymore. All right. So next, we're going to move on to effects. Um, with these two, the most the, the most used tool that we use in effects is going to be the envelope. And what the envelope does is it will allow you to bend the shape of the design. Um, and if you're familiar with our magic templates, which we have over here, um, they work. They come in handy a lot when you're using that tool. Uh, but this is just beginners of Corel, so we'll get into that another time. Um, so first of all, when I click on object or effects and I go to envelope, you'll see on the right hand side that it should pop up. If you already have it open, sometimes it might be hidden and you can just click on it and it should open it up again. So with a basic shape like this, um, you can do a lot with it. First of all, I always select the single art and you're going to click add new. So you'll see how these little blue dots come around your design on the corners in the middle. So what we're going to do is just play around with this for a bit. So if I pull this middle one up, you'll see the shape bend up. And same if I bend it down. And on the corners, anything like that. Anywhere where you have these little blue dots we call nodes, you can change the shape of the object. All right, so I'm just going to go back. Now, the good thing about the envelope and what we usually make it, use it for is to mirror what we do to one side. So if I hold control and pull up the bottom, you'll see that it raises up the top two. So now it puts a nice arc in your design or shape. Um, I'm going to go back. And now I'm going to do the same thing, but instead of holding control, I'm going to hold shift and raise it up. And you'll see that it instead of it brings them together. And it will do the same thing if I pull it outward. It's just going to do the opposite. So control, going back, if we do it with control, it's going to follow. If I go up, the top's going to go up. If I go down, the top's going to go down. So it just almost mirrors. It does the exact same with the top as it does the bottom. Now, if I do shift, it does the opposite. So if I go up, the top comes down. And same with the sides. If I go left, the right. If I go left, it's going to come right on the other side. So you'll see how the envelope can really affect that. Right. So, so we'll go to our text next. Um, bitmaps, that's a little more... Um, advanced. Um, well, there are a lot of webinars covering bitmaps, so you know I can reference those if you're more interested in bitmaps, but for now we're just going to do basics and we're going to do, next we'll do the text and we're going to do fit to path. Alright, so this tool, first of all we'll type something out. I'm going to just change the font. And then when you type something out, um, sometimes it will come in smaller. I always recommend pulling from the corner. Um, if you pull from the bottom or the sides, it's going to distort your text. Um, and this can cause problems when you're working with rhinestones. Um, you know, right now, just starting off, it doesn't really matter. Um, with the vector font, you can pull it whatever way you want to make it look how you want. But always recommend pulling from the bottom just so it stays uh, proportionate. All right, and from there, if I have this selected, you'll see that I'm always in the A, and you can highlight, you can change the font. If I change the font when I'm in it, it's not actually going to change what I have. You'll need to select your pick tool, and then select your font, and then you can change it to, you know, whatever font you'd like. Um, sometimes when you're actually typing in it, um, it won't always switch over, but if you just go back to the pick tool, then you'll be able to choose your phone. All right. So if we go to text, you'll see text fit to, 
fit text to path. Now, let me just draw an object. Usually people like cert, like fitting around a circle or a sphere or something like that. So we'll try that. So we're going to fit text path. And you'll see, I'm not even clicking anything right now. Uh, it's just hovering over it. Um, and you'll see how it just follows the path of the shape. So depending on where you want it, you can bring it out. It's going to a different one now. But you can bring it out farther. You can go down. You can go upside down. Go to the side. And then when you figure out where you like it, you just click and it just sets it there for you. Does anybody have any questions or anything like that right now? Alright. Oh, thank you, Dorian. <laughs> you make it look too easy. Alright. Up here, and then you also have these shapes up here, so if you don't like it, you can play around with these and it will affect the shaping of it. Alright. And you can flip it upside down, mirror it, anything you want from up here. All right, so next, you have your table. Um, we don't really create too many tables. Okay, so yeah, sometimes when you do this, um, when you select it, it's going to hold on to the shape. Um, if you want to get rid of it, you should just be able to double-click on shape and delete it. Let me know if that works for you. Awesome. All right. So with the table, again, this is just a table. Um, you know, we don't really use that with our designing. Um, but the tools, um, this, this is going to help you a lot with customization. Um, when you click this option, it's going to bring up the, the options for your workspace. Um, general. You're really not going to pick up or change too much from this. If you, when your Corel starts up, sometimes you have a welcome screen. Um, if you don't like that, you can just change it to start a new document, and it will just you know put you right into the beginning where we started with an untitled one blank page, just with your workspace in the middle. Um, so that you know sometimes with the welcome screen, it it gets annoying just click doing that and then opening a file. So this will just start a new document right for you. And then another important one we like to do is the save. Um, with Corel, Corel is known to crash sometimes. Um, there's really no preventing it. Um, it does have a backup system. So if you are working on something longer, then it's usually set for about 20 minutes. Um, but we like to just do it for five. That way, you know, if it does crash, usually with the five-minute backup system, it gets a lot. What is the recommended workspace size? Um, starting out, it it usually starts around eight and a half by eleven. Um, it doesn't really matter the workspace size until you send a design over to your cutter, or if you're saving a design. So, if you were to be working on a design and it's you know you usually start out around eight and a half by eleven inches, if you have a design over here. And you can see that the outside is a little larger than eight and a half. You'll just want to make sure you just increase it to save it. Um, so you don't really have. There's not such a, like a really recommended workspace. It's just that when you do save a file or when you send it over to your cutter, um, you're going to want to make sure it's inside this workspace. So I'll go back to customization and. Um, so again, the save, I would definitely recommend doing every five minutes. You just click OK. Um, then we have our color palettes. On the right-hand side, you'll see the color palette 
over here. Um, if you want, you can change it to two or three um, dock palettes. When I click OK, you'll see that it just has more colors. Um, but obviously, you can just scroll down if you just have the one, and you'll still see all these colors. So if it gets too much over here with all the palettes, you can just come back and change it back to one. Let's see with the windows. Um, these are just opening new windows, closing a window. You're not going to, you know, with designing, you're not going to do too much through here. Um, one thing you might want to use is the color palettes. Um, right now you can see these are the preloaded color palettes you have in here. If I click on one, it'll pop up on my screen right here, and you can just drag it to the side, and it'll add it for you over here as well. And again, if I want to get rid of that, I can just come back. Hey, Linda. Yeah, usually it takes a couple days just to edit everything. If you're having trouble hearing me, um, this definitely will be recorded, and you'll be able to go back and reference this. Um, usually it takes a few days just to edit everything, and then we'll put it up on the website for you. And if you have any more, if you have any questions, you can email us too, and we'll make sure you'll you'll be able to see this again. Um, so, again, if you don't want the color palette, you can just simply click it, and it'll just bring you back to the one. And then down here is our different pages you have open. So you can see right here on Title One and Title Two, and then the file we opened at the beginning. You can switch through those through Window 2, but again, it's usually just quicker to just click through here. All right. So now we're going to go down the side menu or the sidebar here and kind of go over the basic tools we have over here. Um, does anybody have any questions at this point of anything we've gone over so far? No? All right, we'll keep going. All right, so we kind of went over the pick and the freehand tool already. Um, again, pick, you always if you're trying to select something, you always want to be in your pick tool. It's just easier to grab that way. Um, if you want to drag over something, uh, again, the pick tool usually works a little better unless it's just a group of things you need. Um, that's when you're going to want to use the freehand. Um, so another cool trick, if I want to select this box, but I need the whole thing. and So if I select this and I'm just a little short on the top of this blue or the orange bar here, if I don't select the whole thing, it's not going to select it it's going to leave that out. So when you're selecting an object, you want to make sure you select the entire design, and that way you can move it all at once. All right. And for some reason, if you do miss the top just a little bit, once you have this drawn, if I, while I'm still holding down the mouse, if I right-click at the same time, I can move this box up and make sure I have everything selected. All right. So I'll show that one again. So you're just going to click and hold and drag a box. And you're going to notice that I'm a little short on the bottom, so I'm going to right-click at the same time and just drag it. And then I have the whole thing selected. Okay. Next is the shaping tool. Um, this comes in handy, you know, with a rectangle or something like this. When I click it. The first, we usually just use the shape tool. You can play around with um, the other ones in here, but for designing, you're really not going to use these too much. It's going to be more the shape. So you'll see these black boxes come up around each side. When I pull one of them, it's going to do it to all of them. And then you can see that it's just rounding off the corners. So you're taking you know, a rectangle object and just kind of smoothing those corners out. So you can see that's actually how we did this design over here. We, took, we started with a rectangle, and we smoothed off the corners. And then you get this image instead. Next is the crop. Um, this comes in handy a lot when someone sends you a design um, that they want you know, converted, either rhinestones or vector. Um, you want to let's go over that again. OK, so the rounding, someone wants to see the shape again. All right, so when we start off, 
you'll see that, and you can do it with any real shape, um, you'll see that the corners are the sharp edges. So when I click this shape tool, it should already have those shape selected. Um, if it doesn't, you'll see that it's a different um, icon. So we want to make sure we do the shape. And then we just pull the corners. And whatever I do to one side, it's going to do to everything. So if I drag it from here, it's still going to affect the top. And you can go all the way and change it to a circle if you want it. Does that help, Casey? Awesome. What if you only want... So I got one from Char. How do you change the color of the workspace? Um, so again, real quick on that, if we go to layout, you'll see page background. And it's usually selected as no background. You can just click solid and then change it to whatever color you, you'd like. So you know, it's sometimes easier to work with a lighter color. It's just a gray just to show you exactly where you have it. So next is going to be the crop. Um, again, the crop is good for designing. Oh, sorry. So just by clicking on the color palettes over here is how you can change the colors of these boxes. So you just have whatever color you select over here, it's just going to change the color of the box. So moving on to the crop. So when someone sends you a picture of a design, that's when the crop tool comes in handy because sometimes when they send it over, you'll have a lot of extra material or dimensions on the side where it actually isn't the design. So you can just use the crop tool and just crop out the part that you want. So let's just say, you know, I'll skip ahead a little and Heart. And I'm going to go over how to pull out the heart in a second. So, so I'll set the heart on top and that in the back. So with the crop tool, let's just say I wanted the heart and I don't need all this extra. So I can take the crop and I can just come around what I need. And you can get real close if you want and just get it right up to the heart. And then when you have your dimensions you want, you just double click and then you're just left with whatever you cropped out. So now you have your box and then just the heart. So when someone sends you a design and you, you're trying to get the right dimensions, it's easier to crop out just the design and then you can go from there. Um, this is just a zoom. Uh, I always recommend on if you're working with a mouse that has a scroll, um, if you go to display, you'll see the default action for the mouse wheel is zoom. And that's going to come in handy a lot. Um, if you have the mouse that has the scroll in the middle, in between the right and left click, I would recommend putting it on zoom. And that way, all you have to do, if you go back, it zooms out. If you go forward, it zooms in. And if you don't have that tool, um, you can use this up here, and if you're working in your page, you can just select, you know, if you're way over here and you want to get to your design, you go to page, and it brings you right back to it. So sometimes when you're zooming in and out, you can get lost. You know, it happens. Um, if you just go right back here to page, it's going to bring you right back to your page. All right. Sure, sometimes I get lost. Yeah, it happens to all of us. So. All right, next here is going to be all your um, freehand tools. The one that we use the most is the B-spline. Um, the freehand, you kind of just click and draw, and that's what you're left with. Um, with the B-spline, the way 
we like this the best because it's great for tracing. So you just, wherever you click, it's going to leave those nodes that we talked about earlier. So you can just go around, you know, an object. You know, this heart is already a vector, so it doesn't really matter. But if you're using like a basketball or anything like that, this, this is where the baseline is going to come in handy. So this is just a quick trace. Baseline. And then you can see you're left with the heart. So if you zoom in and double click this, you'll see all these little blue dots and squares around it are the nodes. Um, you can double click on those and to get rid of them, or you can double click to add one. And once you add one, you can kind of move them around however you want if you don't like that overall shape of the heart. You can play around with it like that. So the B-spline is the tool you'll most likely use when designing or tracing something. Um, these other ones, you know, they work the same. The freehand, it's kind of hard just to go straight around the heart like that. Um, so I would definitely recommend the B-spline over that. All right. So quickly here is just the brush strokes. Um, you'll see down here is the spray list that you have. Um, if you're working with X6 or X7, you might not have all these. The, they update usually with every Corel. Um, so if you just select one and then you just make a quick line, it's actually going to fill those with whatever spray you have up here. And if you go to objects, there's a lot of different ones to choose from. And you can just make lines, circles with them, whatever you want. Um, it's just a quick little brush tool. And there are actually just brush strokes if you don't want an actual design. And how did you get to that? So it's right underneath the freehand and B-spline tool. It might be a little different if you're using a different um, Corel, but it's going to be the artistic media tool. You just click that. All right, so yeah, if you're working with X7, it's going to be right under the B-spline tool. It's going to be the artistic media tool. Okay. And then next, we're going to get into our basic shapes. Um, Char, yeah, X6 should have that. Um, if you want to message me later, uh, I'll, I can show you where that is um, if you have any trouble finding it. All right. So with the basic shapes here, Again, we've been doing the square. I've done a couple squares already. Um, you can make them whatever shape you want. You're just going to click, hold, and drag. If I hold control while I'm making it, it's going to make it a perfect square. You can see up here it's 11.4 by 11.4. Um, if I drag it in the corner, it's going to stay proportionate. All right. And the same is working with the uh, circle. If I hold control, it's going to do a perfect circle. If I don't, it's going to, you know, you can make oval, egg shapes, whatever you like. All right. Now, these are more complex um, shapes. You have the polygon, the star, complex star. Um, so with the star, same thing. If you hold control, it's going to make it a perfect star. And then you'll see up here, um, you can actually add more. points to it, um, and then you can make it sharper and play around with it up here. So there's a lot of different, yeah, um, same with the complex star, hold control. If you want more, you can add more. Um, you can add the sharpness to it. And then if you scroll down here, so this is my, where it might look a little bit different too from X6 to X7. Um, but you're going to have your basic shapes. And when I click on here, it's going to come up here. It's going to be the drop-down for all the different shapes you can use. So one of the most common ones we use is the heart. So I would just click the heart and then control to make the perfect heart. If you want a little wider, you can let go. And then you just let go and you have your shape. All right. And then you'll see right here next to it is always the pen thickness. So right now you can see it's a pretty thin line. If I want it a little thicker, I can go to 10. 
and it'll be you know a little thicker. This doesn't actually change anything um, until you convert it to an outline. So right now, in our enhanced view, you actually see the boldness of the line. But when I go back to my wireframe, which we talked about earlier, so this is what the cutter is going to see. You're just going to see that thin line. So to make it, if you actually want these to continue, you can go to object and convert outline to object. And now you'll just have this bold line as your cut line so that it won't actually cut the inside. It'll just cut the thickness of the line. So if I go to wireframe now, you can see the difference. Next, down here you have some spiral tools that you can play around with too. Um, we really don't use too many of these when we're designing. We try to stick to more of the basic shapes to help us. Um, down here you'll see you have arrow shapes. So if you want to play around with any of these, feel free. Um, and then we also have flowchart, banner, and callout. The banner shapes come in handy a lot sometimes when you design if you're working with you know a school or something like that. These are great. Um, you just drop down, you can see the different ones. And again, with these, you can go back to the envelope tool that we talked about earlier. If you still have it up over here, you can add new. And it's going to be just like the box we did, but you're going to use it with an actual shape. So now when I push control and up, you can bend the overall design. I'll bring it down. or even increase it. So there's a lot you can do with these shapes with the envelope tool, you know, eventually you're going to start using all these together. And you can create a lot more. So let's see. And then we have our call out shapes, you know. Um, again with designing, probably not going to use these too much, but they do come in handy sometimes. Different designs. So next, you have your text tool. Um, this is pretty simple. You just click on it. It's gonna when you click on it, it's gonna give you that A, um, and then you just select wherever you want to start typing. I bet you know sometimes you might have to scroll or zoom in just to see what you're typing at first. Um, again, if you have if you don't have the text selected and you try to change the text, it's probably not gonna work. You either have to select everything or go back to your pick tool, select it, and then you can change the font from there. Does anyone have any questions on the text or the basic shapes or anything like that? Awesome. So again, with the envelope, just a quick reminder, you can always add more to it you know, with your text with the envelope tool. So once I have my text selected, I just go to add new. Um, this time I'm going to hold shift and just pull it down and let go. So you can see how the envelope tool can, you know, you can just take a basic font and then just play around with it like that. Uh, so you just add something different to it. Uh, again, you can do it. If you go up with control, you can envelope it and make a nice arch. Um, if I go down, you can go down with it. So any of those, you can just add a basic you know, you make a basic font and you make it a little better, a little more interesting. Okay. All right, so these tools down here, the parallel, the straight line connector, you're not going to use these too much. And then the next one, um, you'll see the envelope tool you can find down here as well. And then the contour. The contour can come in handy. Um, it just adds an extra, you know, contour to the outside or if you go in, to it, you can go to the inside of it. Um, it just, you know, adds a, a boundary to the outside or the inside. Nicole, Noel, can you do that one more time? Uh, were you referring to the envelope with the text? Awesome. All right. Back. Okay. So when you have your text, whatever you have set up. You're just going to click it. You're going to want to make sure your envelope features open. Again, if you go to object or arrange, depending on what you have, 
um, you can go, oh, sorry, it's actually going to be effects. And you'll see envelope right here. If it's ch if you have a check mark, buy it. It's going to be on your left hand or your right hand side. Sometimes it does get closed, so you just have to double click where it says envelope, and it'll open it for you. All right. So you're just going to click add new, and we're always working with a single arc. Um, that tends to work the best. So I'm just going to click add new. All right, Karen, you lost your toolbar. How do I get it back? Um, what toolbar did you lose? Did you lose it on the right-hand side or the left? Top. Okay. So if you go to Window at the top, if you, ever, if you guys are ever missing a toolbar, you'll see Tools, or Window, and then Toolbar. Um, this is going to have the drop-down of all of the toolbars you have installed. Um, so it's going to be one of these, Karen. I'm not sure exactly which one you lost, but it's either the menu um, or the toolbox that you most likely got rid of. But if you don't see a check mark by one of these, um, it's, that's the one you're probably missing. All right? And you can see down here we have the TRW toolbox. So that's this one right here at the bottom. If you guys purchase the wizard, um, you'll see this one added into Corel. Um, so just a quick show how it works. If I unclick this, you'll see that that toolbar is gone now. All right, and just to simply add it back. I just come back in here and click it. All right, so going back to the envelope, once we have our text selected, you can either highlight it or just click it. And we're going to go to Add New. We're going to make sure this middle one's selected. Um, you can play around with the putty, horizontal, original, vertical, all these um, two. Usually the putty we start off with, um, and then we're just going to click Add New. Okay, so you're going to see these little boxes, the nodes come up around it. And so to make it go up, to make both go up, we're just going to hold Control and raise it. To make it go down, you can do the same thing. You just click the top, hold Control. And it's going to do the same to the bottom. Now you can also just click the bottom and not hold anything. And it'll add an arc like that. And you can do that to the top. And then last, we have our shift. So when we shift click, it's going to bring it in. And if we pull shift click and bring it out, it's going to bring them both out. All right, so moving on. Um, so again, you have your envelope and contour. Those are the two tools you'll use most through here. Um, and then the next one I want to show you is the Smart Fill. Now, if you highlight over it, it will say Smart Fill. If you're working with X6 or 5, I believe it's more towards the top. Um, but it should have about the same icon. And if you highlight over it, it's going to say Smart Fill, or Smart Fill Tool. All right, so with this, I'm going to bring us over to my other designs I have brought in. And this is just a basic magic pack um, that we have selected. Uh, I want to show you what you can do with the Smart Fill tool with a basic design like this. Um, so right now where the white is, it's anywhere you see the white, it's gonna, the shirt's going to show through. So what we can do, say we want to work with this vector, but we want the vector to, or the white to be another color. We don't want the shirt to show through here. So with Smart Fill, if I click this right now, it's going to Smart Fill everything and just make it purple. So what we need to do is close in this design. We're going to go back to our B-spline tool. And I'm just going to select it and make a straight line right across the top. So this is closed in, and I'm going to do the same with the bottom. So wherever it's open, you just want to make sure that area is closed in. And now I'm going to go back to my Smart Fill, and boom. So now you can see that I have just the vector of the baseball player. And you can change, you know, this is where you can change to your team colors, whatever you like and change that around. Or what you can do, you know, if you just need a new baseball vector, you can just simply take that out, 
and use this for a different design. Now you have a baseball vector. So when you buy a pack of magic templates, just going back a few steps. So when you buy a pack of magic templates like this, and you have all these, you know, vectors that are cut out, you can actually make your own vectors through all these. So, you know, you come with a pack with one, two, three, four, five, a pack of 25. Now you have 25 different designs plus 25 new vectors. So these are where these packs and the Smart Fill tool can save you a lot of money. So again, you know, if you wanted more of a, if you're looking for a soccer player, not only do you have this great magic template, you can close in sides. Again, we're just going to B-spline. Coming across, just closing this up. Closing this one up. And then we just click our Smart Fill. All right. Now, I didn't close up the soccer ball. Um, now, if, if you want it, if you wanted it in the, to use it in the same design, I would recommend closing it. But if you're just looking for to get a new vector, you don't have to because what we can do is just pull this out and we're going to go back to our shape tool and when we hold control with the circle it's just going to make a perfect circle for us and then I can just change the color and now I have my, I've made my own soccer ball and I know it's a perfect circle Hey, Ronnie, yeah, this will be recorded. Um, it's most likely going to be available in the next few days. Um, once it gets edited and all that, um, we'll have it up on the website, and you can um, go back and review anything you missed. All right. So does anyone have any questions about the Smart Fill or anything like that? All right. Let me just show you one more way the Smart Fill will help. Um, just adds more to design. Now, I'm just pulling a design in right now. Or actually, I'm just going to go through File, and I'll go to Import, because I want it on the same page that I'm working on, so I'm going to do Import instead. All right. And then I'm always importing as curves. All right. Now, wherever I select on this page, it's just going to drop it. And so this is another split image pack we have with our mascots. So, you know, it just takes a simple basic design and you can just add more to it. So with this, let's say we're working with this bulldog and all these are already closed in. So we really don't have to worry about that. This is just adding another color to an existing design if you don't want the shirt to show through as much. So it's taking a two or three color design and just adding another color to it. And wherever there's just white, you're just going to click and fill it in. And then once you're all done, I'm going to highlight everything. And then you have your bulldog. That's another color. So who remembers what tool to use when we want this just as one object? Because right now, if I select this part, it's just going to grab the face. But I want to make it so we select everything. Casey nailed it. Weld. So I'm just going to highlight this entire design, just the part that I want. So now I just have the Bulldog's purple, the purple part of the face, and I'm going to go back up to my tool and click Weld. Now, even though these aren't touching, it's still one object now. So no matter where I grab on this, it's just it's still going to grab the entire design. All right. So now it's really easy to you know if you want to change the color to anything, you're able to. All right. So right now when I bring this in, you can see that it's moving everything as one. So what it's telling us is that it's grouped. Now, if you remember when we go to object, you'll have your group tab right here. Um, and you'll see ungroup objects and ungroup all objects. Now pretty much these are going to work the same. Um, if you have more than one object grouped, you can ungroup all. Or if you're just selecting one, you can just ungroup that object. Um, again. Right here is the symbol for it, and you'll see the shortcut on the right. Now, if you look over to the top right here, you'll see these two symbols right here. So, Corel does put a lot of different shortcuts, so there's going to be a lot of tools that do the same. They're the same tool. You'll just be able to find them in different places. So, if I want to ungroup everything, 
I can just click right here and now you'll see that everything's just selected as one or everything's just by itself. So now I can go back, change the color up, make it my team colors, you know, and then I'm done. All right. So does anybody have any questions about anything we went over today? Or is there anything I can go over that I missed? No? No response? All right. Well, thank you guys for participating in my first webinar. Hope I wasn't too bad for you guys. Um, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to give us a call um, at 941-755-1690. Oh, wait. Can you go back to the save options? All right. So, no problem. So let's just say, uh, Doran, I actually ungrouped everything at once, um, but you can ungroup them just, you know, if I wanted this design grouped, I can just go back to object and then group, and now just this one is grouped, and then to ungroup it, I can do control U as a shortcut, or I can come back up here and ungroup the object, and then you'll see it's ungrouped. Okay, Angela, autosave. Okay, no problem. So, if we go to tools, and then customization, uh, you'll see general, display, edit, and if you go down to about the middle, it's going to say save. Um, and you're going to click this backup every. Make sure that's selected. If it's not, it's not going to let you change anything. So, you're going to do backup every. And then you want to probably set it to five minutes. Um, just in case you know Corel ever crashes or anything like that, if you know your power goes out, um, it will save it. Um, and you can even make it go to you know a certain folder if you want to save it to your desktop. But if you do a temporary folder, usually when you open up Corel the next time, it will ask you this file was temporarily saved. Do you want to open it? You just click yes, and you should have that file that you were working on, and at the last and up to the last save that it did on it. All right. Any more questions? All right. Well, if you guys run into anything, like I said, feel free to give us a call or email at info at the Rhinestone World, and we'll be happy to help you. Um, my name was Sean, and I hope you guys have a great day.